Today we shall discuss on instruments used for nose. Important instrument used in nose is thudicum nasal speculum, which is traditionally being asked in the exam. First question is how do you hold this instrument? The instrument is kept in the instrument tray with the blade directed upwards. Now hold in between your thumb and the index finger and middle and the ring fingers on either side of the limbs of the speculum. Here you can see this is the middle finger and the, this is the ring finger. They are kept on either side of the limb and the tips or the blades will be directed towards the patient's nose. So bringing these fingers close to each other brings the flanges or tips of the speculum together. The speculum is always inserted into patient's nostril in the closed position so that it will be easy to insert the speculum and move your middle and ring fingers apart following the flanges of the speculum. You can see the nose, the nasal cavity. While taking out, keep the flanges or the blades slightly open so that it avoids pulling out of any vibrissae. If it pulls the vibrissae, it will be painful for the patient. What are the uses of thuricum's speculum? Thuricum's speculum is used for anterior rhinoscopy to remove foreign bodies from the nose to make the nasal cavity patent or open for nasal packing purpose in septal surgeries while making the incision. Though longer blades are required in the later stages during surgery as we go more deeper. More commonly used speculum for nasal examination are Vienna type nasal speculum. You will be asked about its use again. It is used in anterior rhinoscopy and during septal surgery either SMR or septoplasty to make the incision as well. How do you hold this instrument? Handles are held between thinner and hypothenar eminences of palm. Thumb is kept under the stem and index finger of the left hand rests on patient's nose to avoid trouble. This is the instrument being held here. This is the examiner's left hand. The speculum is always held on the left hand on examination and this is the forceps being used to pack the nasal cavities. The speculum has been handled with the left hand and the examiner's index finger is supporting on the patient's nose so that there will be no trauma. Next is Tilly's nasal dressing forceps. Tilly's nasal dressing forceps they have box joint and serrated end. It is used as packing forceps to pack nasal cavity with medicated gospies following nasal surgery or to control epistaxis. And it also can be used to remove foreign body from the nasal cavity like paper, small plastic toys like that. Next is posterior rhinoscopy mirror. Uh, there is difference between Indirect lining scopy mirror and the post rhinoscopy mirror that must have been touched in your practicals. The post rhinoscopy mirror is by nipset or bent. As you know, most of the nose and ear instruments are bent, and the angulation of mirror is around 150 degrees. In case of IL mirror, the shaft is straight, and the angulation from the shaft to the mirror is around 120 degrees because nasopharynx is located more superiorly and posteriorly. And the larynx is located more inferiorly and anteriorly. How do you hold and pass the instrument? This is also an important question asked in the exam. The mirror has to be preheat or has to be dipped in anti-fog solution. Hold the mirror in pin holding position and depress the tongue with tongue depressor and pass beyond the uvula to look upwards towards the nasal pharynx. This is very important. Which instrument is co-used with posterior rhinoscopy mirror? The answer is tongue depressor because tongue has to be depressed while doing posterior rhinoscopy and the patient's tongue is to be protruded and held with the gauze piece in case of indirect laryngoscopy. The next question to be asked in the exam is what are the structures seen on posterior rhinoscopy? I think you should be able to tell the structures and what is the difference between PR and IL mirror as I have already discussed. So next question is how to preheat the IL mirror or PR mirror. So while heating the mirror part is always heated. When it is very hot, it might cause damage to the patient's uvula or posterior phanyl wall. So it has to be always tested on the back of the hand before inserting to patient's oral cavity and oropharynx. Tongue depressor. Although its important function is in the examination of oral cavity, it also can be used as an adjunct in posterior endoscopy, cholespatula test for nasal patency test and tonsillosquist test. What is tonsillosquist test or urinomorcine? If the interior of tonsils are pressed with tongue depressor, there will be expression of pus in chronic tonsillitis from the tonsillar clips. So this is called irinomorcine, which is one of the signs of chronic tonsillitis. Rest two signs are chronic congestion of the interior and persistent jugulodigastric lymphadenopathy. The next instrument is Politzer's bag. This is Politzer's bag with the rubber tubing attached here. The use of Politzer's bag is for Politzer's stress, which is one of the tests for station tube function. How do you perform polarization? The rubber tube is attached to a polarizer bag which is put in one nostril 
and both the nostrils are pinched and person is asked to swallow or repeat K and produces bag is squished simultaneously and otoscopy shows lateral bulging of eardrum in patent stretching tube. So this is one of the tests for stretching tube patency. Next instrument is stretching tube catheter. The use is stretching tube catheterization as one of the tests for patency of stretching tube. The ring guides the direction of the catheter tip. See this is the ring and this is the catheter tip. So as we are going up down laterally this will signify the direction or this will guide the direction for you. It can be used as an adjunct for formulary removal also. How to catheterize the stretching tube? Stretching tube catheter passed along the nasal floor till it touches the posterior wall of the nasal pharynx. Now the catheter is rotated 90 degree medially and pulled forward till it impinges on the posterior nasal septum. Then catheter is rotated 180 degrees laterally and its tip is inserted into opening of the stretching tube. Posterior bag attached to outer end of the catheter and air is pushed into the stretching tube catheter by squeezing the posterior bag. And posterior bag, posterior bag is attached to the outer end of the catheter here and the air is pushed into the stretching tube catheter by squeezing the posterior bag. Now the exam mirror hears by twin B auscultation tube placed on patient's ear. If there is blowing sound, the stretching tube patency is normal. If there is bubbling sound, there is middle air fluid. If there is whistling sound, there is partial stretching tube obstruction. And if there is no sound, there is complete obstruction of stretching tubes. Next instrument is Killian's self-retaining long-bladed nasal speculum. The Killian's is a self-retaining with a screw or St. Clair Thompson's long-bladed nasal speculum. These are the St. Clair nasal long-bladed nasal speculums. What are their use? They are used to elevate the septal flap during septal surgery. Might be SMR or septal partial surgery. They have longer blades so that they can reach out to the posterior part of the nose. So next question is how Killian's nasal speculum is self-retaining. You can see the screw here. If you lock the screw, it becomes self-retaining. Next is Freer's mucopericoneal or mucoperiosteal elevator. It is used to elevate the mucopericoneum or mucoperiosteal flap during septal surgery. What are the commonest septal surgeries performed? They are septoplasty and SMR surgery. What are the indications for septoplasty? You know the indications. You know the surgical steps of septoplasty, one of the important questions in exam. What are the complications of septal surgery and compare between septoplasty and SMR surgery. These are the common questions that can be asked along with this instrument. Next is Kirian's septal goose and hammer or mallet. This is the goose and this is the hammer or mallet. As you can see, this is by intercept paint instrument. It is used in goosing the maxillary crest or bummer or bony spot during septal surgery. Why is it by intercept or bent? The hand of the user does not obscure the vision of instrument tip. Otherwise, in the nose, there might be much trauma. So, we have to see at the site of gouging. So this is the reason why the instrument is bent. How is it different from chisel and osteotomes? This is a very important question asked in the exam. So gouge is curved. As you can see, the gouge is curved. Chisel is beveled on one side and osteotom is beveled on both the sides. So in the exam, if you see curved instrument that is probably gouge, the instrument which is beveled on one side is probably chisel and beveled on both sides is the osteotom. They have different purposes. Mallet is used to hit on the head of goose, chisel and osteotome. This is the mallet which is used to hit with the mild force. Next is Lux forceps which is commonly asked in the exam. What are the use of Lux forceps? It is used in cartilage Lux surgery for removing the bone and cartilage from the nasal septum. It can also be used for biopsy also. How is it different from tonsil loading forceps? Lux forceps arms have sold for each other. And this is very sharp instrument in comparison to tonsil loading forceps. And upper and lower lips of this instrument, they match together. But upper and lower lips of tonsil loading forceps, the upper lip is slightly shorter than the lower lip. So it does not cause trauma or cutting of the tonsils when the tonsils are grabbed. The Ballinger swivel knife, which was used during SMR surgery, but now we rarely perform SMR surgeries. What are the surgical steps of SMR surgery? You have to be able to answer that question. What is the direction of cords on septal cartilage with the help of Ballinger's swivel knife? First, the swivel is applied in the anterior portion near the septum taken superiorly, then again inferior in the posterior part and down. So whole of this septal cartilage is removed except certain amount of dorsal and the caudal start. So the dorsal start and the caudal start. The next instrument uses Walsam's forceps. They are also called as 
valve sums lateral valve forceps this is the lateral valve forceps you can see so the two pair of forceps what are its uses use is close reduction of nasal bone fracture what is the purpose of rubber padding protects the skin from damage so this is a rubber pad which is pressed outwards this blade goes inside and this blade is kept outside so that there will be no trauma to the skin of the outer part of the nose this is as septum forceps uses close reduction of septal fracture there is a gap between the blades prevents crossing of the nasal septum otherwise if there is no gap then the nasal septum will be crossing how do you manage the nasal bone fracture and what is the golden period of fracture reduction of nasal bones this golden period is around 3 hours when there is no edema or less edema in the nose otherwise when there is more edema uh, it will be difficult to reposition the septum and we have to wait for up to 7 days for the edema to set in next instrument is tillis enter harpoon and burr these are rarely used instruments nowadays as we don't perform cardiac surgery most of the times so this is the harpoon these are the burr what is the use of harpoon it is used for making hole in lateral nasal wall during intranasal enterostomy so this is the harpoon and enteral bore is used to widen the opening of internal endostomy or to make the opening smooth so you may not get this instruments in the exam the last instrument discussed for today will be miles nasal enteral perforator it is uses widening for opening of the internal endostomy in cases of cardiac surgery or internal endostomy which is also rarely performed nowadays thank you so much please subscribe my channel dr krishna koyada for other useful videos in ENT. Her module of instruments will be coming soon about the instruments on throat. Thank you. Have a good day.